Hello, I'm Tara with Northwest Association for Blind Athletes, and you are watching our full body circuit workout video. Uh, as a reminder, you should always consult with your doctor before beginning any type of exercise or physical activity. You are responsible for your own health and safety at all times. We encourage you to self monitor throughout the workout, take breaks when needed, hydrate, and modify your activity based on how you and your body are responding to the workout. Our mission at Northwest Association for Blind Athletes is to provide life-changing opportunities through sports and physical activity to individuals who are blind and visually impaired. Today, we are going to do that by doing our virtual audio-described full body circuit workout. So get ready to join us. Today, you will need a weight, which is optional, so you do not need the weight if you do not want it, uh, a space to do your exercises, so on the ground, on a yoga mat, we will doing, be doing some exercise on the ground in a space uh, as big as a yoga mat to do your exercises standing up and always a glass of water or a water bottle. Let's get started. All right, so what we're gonna do first is we're just gonna walk in place or walk back and forth in the space that you have to start our bodies to get warm. So what you're gonna do is I'm just gonna walk back and forth in my space. So the length across the length of the yoga mat. Uh, feel free to walk in place or around your own space you have. Just slowly lifting our bodies up. Maybe you just go back, maybe you were sitting down before this. Just gradually waking it up. Alrighty. Now we're going to transition into arm circles. So what you're going to do is feet stay planted, standing however is comfortable. Put your arms out to your sides in a T-shape or an airplane shape and roll your shoulders and arms forward, creating small circles on either side of you. And progressively make those circles bigger. as big as is comfortable and when you've got them as big as you can go ahead and switch directions so roll your shoulders and arms backwards starting with small circles again making my circles bigger as i go wonderful and next up we're going to do glute kicks so for glute kicks, make sure you're standing. If you need something sturdy to hold on to, feel free. Uh, but what you're going to do is you're going to take your left heel, bring it to your bottom, and then bring it down. Your right heel, bring it to your bottom, and then bring it back down. One thing to keep in mind is we always work in off position. So when my right heel is up to my glutes, my left arm is bent in an L shape or 90 degree angle coming forward and up. So. You're going to do the same on the opposite side. So my right or your left heel is on your glutes. Your right arm is bent to an L shape, 90 degree angle, coming forward. So go ahead and do these glute kicks at your own pace. I'm starting with a marching pace for my uh, glute kicks. Get the body up first before we get moving. If you want to progressively pick up the pace, you can. Alrighty, and now we're going to move into high knees. So for high knees, what you're going to do is you're going to lift your left knee up to the sky, to the ceiling, and your right arm forward bent at an L shape for 90 degree angle, so opposition. Bring them both back down. Right knee up, left arm forward, and repeat. So you can do this at a marching pace or a faster jogging pace, whatever pace you prefer. Don't forget to breathe. Keep those arms going in opposition. Drag those knees up high. Alrighty, now we're going to move into our windmill toe touches. So for our windmill toe touches, we are going to spread our feet out wider than shoulder width apart, but still comfortable. So 
You don't want to be doing a split if that's not comfortable for you. My feet are about two and a half feet of distance apart, um, but I am five foot three, so that could be different for you. So feet wide and shoulder width apart, and put your hands out, your arms out in that T-shape or airplane shape again. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your right fingertips, bend down, bring them to your left toes, and your left hand to the ceiling. So come back up to my starting position, left hand to right toes, right hand to the ceiling. So you're bending at the waist here, and then you're gonna repeat at your own pace. So right hand to left toes, left hand in the air, left hand to right toes, right hand in the air. So you're going from a star position to a bent over position, back to that star position. Moving in. Go at a pace that's good for you. Hopefully you're starting to feel warm now. All right, and we are going to switch to our last form of exercise, which is calf raises or heel raises. So what we're going to do is we are going to stand on your feet as if you were just relaxing standing. Uh, so your uh, feet don't have to be a specific distance apart. I find it easier if you're under your hips. If you want, uh, if you struggle with balance or maybe you just want to have more stability, you can spread your feet out further apart, like shoulder width apart. Um, and what you're gonna do is you're just gonna lift both of your heels off the ground, but keep your toes on the ground and then drop your heels back down. So heels up, heels down, heels up, heels down, heels up, heels down. And you will continue that motion. So we start with our calf muscles up, Feel free to hold on to some type of balance if you need to. And now I'm going to get a sip of water before we start our first circuit, which is going to be our upper body circuit. Our circuit today is going to consist of lateral arm raise raises, YTWs, and an overhead tricep extension. So for the first exercise of lateral arm raises, what you're going to do is you're going to stand with your arms by your sides. And then what you're going to do is raise both of your hands up at the same time out into a T shape and then drop them back down by your sides. So slowly raise those arms up to a T shape, slowly drop them back down to your sides. So when you're doing this, uh, you are more than welcome to put water bottles in your hands, soup cans, weight, whatever you have at home to help give you an extra challenge with those lateral arm raises. I do not have two of anything that are the same weight with me, so I'll be doing them without weights. Uh, the next exercise is a YTW. So you have a little bit of choice here. So for the YTWs, you are going to put your arms in that position to make that letter Y, T, or W. So that's why they're called YTWs. So to start, I'll describe Y. To do Y, you're gonna raise your hands up in the air and they're gonna go, they're not gonna go straight above your head, they're gonna go slightly outwards to, to like the corners of the ceiling of the room you're in if you're inside. Um, so they're at a slight diagonal, but still upwards so that your body is making a Y shape. What you're going to do now that you're in that Y shape is you're just going to pinch your shoulder blades together. So your arms move slightly behind your ears and then you unpinch and your arms will come back um, next to your ears. So pinch those shoulders, arms come forward. So when you're pinching your shoulders, your arms will move slightly back, but it's not a drastic movement. So you will feel that though if you do them consistently and repeatedly. So that's the Y shape. The next shape is the T shape. So we've done the T shape a few times already today. So T shape or airplane shape. My palms are facing towards the floor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch my shoulder blades together. My arms are gonna 
move backwards slightly to allow my shoulder blades to pinch together. And uh, there you there you have it. There's your T. And then the last one is your W. So what you're going to do is put your arms in a W shape. So I'm going to have my arms at my sides, and then I'm going to raise my hands up so that my palms are facing forward, fingertips are up. I have a bend in my elbows, so my elbows are kind of down more towards my wrists, or not my wrists, my ribs. <laughs> uh, and so I have a, a good diagonal. My fingertips are pointed upwards towards the ceiling, but a little towards the diagonal as well. So upwards to a diagonal so that uh, you get that W shape. And what you do is you pinch those shoulder blades together and then those elbows will move back behind your rib cage uh, and you will feel that in your shoulders as well. So for the YTWs, you can switch between all three. You can pick one that's your favorite, uh, totally up to you. So those are our YTWs. Next up is overhead tricep extension. So you can do this with or without a weight. I'm going to use my water bottle as a weight. So my water bottle is full right now. And so I'm going to do it holding my water bottle in my hands. But if you're not holding it in your hands, still move your hands in the same directions that I'm saying. So I'm going to put my water bottle in my hands. I'm going to put my hands over my head. So I'm holding my water bottle over my head. And then just for safety, I hold my water bottle a little bit behind my head so that if I drop my water bottle, it drops to the floor behind me and not on my head. So you can take a weight or you can take a soup can, salsa can, whatever you have. Feel free to use that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap my hands around my weight so that my thumbs are pointing down. And um, once my hands are, my thumbs are pointing down, then I'm going to bend my elbows. So I'm going to keep my, from my shoulder to my elbow stationary. My shoulder to my elbow will not move. They'll still be pointed towards the ceiling. But what I'm going to do is my elbow to my wrist and my hands holding the weight, I am going to move. So I'm going to bend the weight back behind my head so that my elbows come down. The weight's now behind my neck. And then I raise the weight back up above my head. So above my head, behind my neck, bending those elbows, and then above my head again. And you can do this without a weight as well, just by moving your hands up and then bending those elbows so that your hands go behind your neck. So those are, are our overhead tricep extensions. So for our uh, exercise today, we're going to use a Tabata timer app to time our workout. So the app is called Tabata, T-A-B-A-T-A. -A -A. You can get it in the app store for free. And we're doing different settings. So we're going to do four rounds of this. 30 seconds each exercise with 10 seconds rest. So we'll do our first exercise for 30 seconds transition for 10 seconds, then start the next exercise, transition for 10 seconds, start the next exercise. That'll be one set, we're gonna do four. So um, it'll whistle and it'll tell us when to exercise and it'll whistle and it'll tell us when to rest, but I will also repeat the whistles um, and the cues. So uh, the two cues that we use are exercise and rest. And feel free to pause the video at any point in time if you need to take a break, get a drink of water, uh, or you can even take a break as the video plays. So feel free to do so as needed. Um, feel free to also change the time frame that um, you're working out. Maybe you want to do three sets, maybe you want to do it for longer or shorter. So um, great. So we're going to do lateral arm raises, YTWs, and then overhead tricep extension. So get ready for lateral arm raises. Remember that standing, having your arms by your side, raising them up into that T-shape and then bringing them back down. So uh, we're gonna start our workout in three, two, one, and exercise. Lateral arm raises. So hands starting by your sides, raising your arms up into that T-shape and then bringing them back down. The slower you bring your arms down, the more it's going to engage those muscles. Your body is often not fighting with gravity. Your muscles are not fighting with gravity very often. So it's a new way to engage your muscles. Wonderful. Keep it up. And Five, 
and rest. All right, get ready for your YTWs. In three, two, one. Put those arms in whatever shape of letter you want. Y to your W. I'm sorry. Y. Pinch those shoulder blades together. And I'm moving to a T. Feel free to pick whichever letters you prefer. And a W. Go ahead. W. Awesome job. And rest. Get ready for your overhead tricep extension. So if you like a weight, feel free to get a weight. Remember to hold it safely. All right, hands and exercise. Hands are above my head. My thumbs are pointed downward. I'm keeping my shoulder blades and my elbows stationary, but I'm bending my hands up above my head to lower by my neck. Using a water bottle as a weight for myself. Up, up, and rest. Get ready for our next set, starting with lateral arm raises. Alrighty, and exercise, lateral arm raises. Nice job, keep it up. Starting with your hands by your side, lifting them into that T position and lowering them back down. Slower you lower them back down, the more your muscles are engaging in a new way. Make sure you drop your hands down and just let gravity do the work, but this time you're fighting it. And rest. Next up, YTWs. Get ready for your YTWs. And I'm going to start with my Ys again. And exercise. Pinching those shoulder blades together. My hands are in a Y shape, and my arms are in a Y shape. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm going to switch to the T shape. Keep pinching those shoulder blades together. You should start feeling it in your shoulders here. And rest. Next up, overhead tricep extension. Grab a weight if you need. Get ready. And exercise. Drop hands up above your head. Drop those hands down behind your neck, keeping your arm between your shoulder and your elbow stationary. Not moving that part. Just moving your hands to your elbows. Up and down behind your head. Feel those triceps. And rest. All right, halfway through, we're going to start with lateral arm raises again when the timer says so. And exercise lateral arm raises. Awesome job. Remember to fight the gravity here, don't move too quickly. Of it. Stop, keep it up. And rest. Coming up next, YTWs. Get ready for your YTWs. Choose whichever one. I'm going to start with my Ws this time. And exercise. Pinch those shoulder blades together. Your arms are in a shape of a Y, T, or W. Don't forget to breathe either. Breathing is very important. Wonderful. And rest. I have been W's the whole time. It's totally fine. All right, next up, overhead tricep extension. And exercise. Let's start with those arms up above your head. 
bring them down behind your head to your neck and then up again. Now I'm moving my weight up and down behind my head so that I don't accidentally drop it on my head. I don't hold my water bottle or put it all behind me. No harm done. And rest. One more set, starting with our lateral arm raises. The last time we're doing our lateral arm raises. And exercise. Lateral arm raises. Good. Good job. Good Keep it up. Keep it up. And rest. Coming up next are YTWs. Go ahead and pick whichever one you want to do. YT or W. And we're going to do our T's this time. Pinch those shoulder blades together. Really working those shoulders. I'm gonna switch to my flies here. Well, this is a slight movement, it's not super dramatic. Alrighty, and then we're gonna finish off with our overhead tricep extension. In three, two, one, exercise. That overhead tricep extension, get those arms up, moving your wrists to your elbows up and down behind your head. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Keep going. It's our last one of our upper body circuit, so make sure you feel the burn. And rest. Nice job. Work out the pause. Work out All reset. right. So that was our upper body circuit. Feel free to get a drink of water. And I'm going to describe our lower body circuit. So getting a drip, quick drink. So our lower body circuit. We're going to focus on standing toe taps, ski jumps, and then wall sits. So standing toe taps, we're going to really focus on our shins. The shins are very, very important to focus on and make sure that we're caring for our shins because a lot of times a lot of exercises we do don't help our shins. So standing toe taps. So you're going to stand in the position that's comfortable for you, toes pointing forward. What you're going to do is you're going to tap your toe. So your heel stays on the ground, tap your toe at whatever pace you're comfortable tapping your toe at. And that's the first step. After, uh, the, after the first round goes and you tap one, your one toe, I'm doing my right, my right toes facing forward. The next round, I'm gonna actually point my toes at a diagonal and tap my toes at a diagonal. So if my, I'm forward facing a clock and the first round I'm tapping at 12 o'clock, Second round, tapping at two o'clock. Uh, the next round, we'll focus on our other foot. So left foot tapping at 12 o'clock. And then the following round after that, left foot tapping at 10 o'clock. So that is our toe taps. And um, it might seem silly to just stand here and do some toe taps, but actually you will start to feel it after doing it for quite a while. So. Uh, standing toe taps. That's our first exercise. Our second exercise is ski jumps. So this is a little bit more active. So what you're going to do is you're going to stand with your feet together. And I am um, just one step to the right of my exercise space because I'm going to jump to the left. So standing feet together, knees a little bit bent. I'm going to have my elbows tucked back behind me and my um, elbows are bent at, or my arms are bent at a 90 degree angle. My hands are in loose fists in front of me. So I have those knees bent, feet together, and then I'm going to jump two feet to the left together. So 
two feet, jump to the left, and land. So when I jump, I, when I'm jumping, I'm swinging my arms forward. And when I'm landing, I'm swinging my arms back and tucking those elbows back behind me. Uh, when I land, I want to land with a little bit of bend in my knees and a little bit of bend in my ankles to care for my joints here as I'm doing a high impact exercise. Um, so again, knees bent, elbows tucked back in 90 degree angle, tucked back behind you. Jumping to the side, arms forward and landing, arms back. Land with a little bit of bend in your knees and ankles so that you're taking care of your joints. So you'll just be jumping back and forth um, over like an imaginary rope or stick or maybe you're jumping on bugs left or right. The next one is a wall sit. So I do not have a wall currently, but um, for a wall sit, what you're going to do is you're going to pretend you are sitting in a chair against a wall. So you're going to put your back against a wall, and then you're going to bend your legs, your knees, so you're at a 90 degree angle. Your back should be flat against the wall. Um, without a wall, I cannot put my back flat. Um, but um, your back should be flat against the wall, knees bent at a 90 degree angle, and press your back against that wall and hold that wall sit. Really engage your really engage your quad muscles. So we're gonna hold that wall sit for 30 seconds. Um, and this is the same cadence as our last exercise. So um, and if you need to take a break during the wall sit or like shake a leg out here and there, totally fine. Wall sits are very difficult to do. So next up, we're gonna start with our standing toe taps. So get a drink of water if you need. Pause, take a minute if you need, otherwise we're getting started. So uh, we're gonna use the same app, same time sequence, starting with standing toe taps. I'm gonna do my right foot tapping forward. Alrighty, starting three, two, one, tapping your left toe or your right toe forward at 12 o'clock. So keep tapping at whatever pace is right for you. So your heel stays on the ground, your toe goes up and down, up and down, up and down. Small motion. Small motion is key. You're not doing anything dramatic here. Just doing this one for the 30 seconds. Let it go. And rest. Get ready for your ski jumps. So feet together, move to your right side to get in preparation. Elbows tucked back, knees bent, and go. Ski jumps. Two feet to two feet, side to side. Not a big jump, but you are going side to side. Jumping, arms forward, landing, arms back. Landing with a little bit of bend in your knees and a little bit of a bend in your uh, ankles. And when I say bend in your ankles, I mean like forward bend so you're not landing flat on them. All right, and rest. Next up is our wall sit. Get ready in three, two, one. Good. Sit back, your back flat against the wall, knees bent at a 90 degree angle. And hold it there. 30 seconds. I'm holding a squat here. <laughs> Gonna hold a wall behind me, so that's another option. And five. And rest. So that was the end of our first round. Get ready for our toe taps. We're going to do our right foot at two o'clock next. And exercise. So tap that toe, your right toe pointing to two o'clock. Keep that heel on the ground. Toe goes up and down. And it really. Make it a small motion. You can go as fast as you'd like. Get it going nice and good here. Really feel those shin muscles work in there. And rest. Next up, ski jumps. Get ready for ski jumps. Feet together, jumping two feet to two feet, side to side. 
elbows tucked back, knees bent, and exercise. Two feet to two feet, elbows tucked back, knees bent, jumping arms forward, landing arms back. Next job. It's not a huge jump, just big enough to get over a little stick that, like, that might be next to you. Jumping over it. Back and forth. And rest. Next up is our wall sit again. Get ready. Three, two, one. Wall sit. I'm going to bounce here a little bit. So back flat against the wall. 90 degree angle from your um, knees, uh, from your hip to your foot, your knees to angle. And she got up, me too. Really engaging your quad muscles. Keep your chest up if you can. And rest. Next up, staying toe taps, doing 12 o'clock on our left side. Means we're halfway done our circuit. And exercise. Tapping that left toe at 12 o'clock. Keeping your heel on the ground. Feel that shin start to engage here. Tap it as fast or as slow as you need to to feel your shin engage here. I like to do small, really, really fast taps. All right, and rest. Get ready for our ski jumps. Remember, take a drink whenever you need on these rests. And exercise. Two feet to two feet, jumping side to side. Stop jumping arms forward, landing arms back. This is your little bit of cardio for the day. And rest. Next up, wall sits. I'm gonna get a sip of water really quick. And go, wall sits. Have your back against the wall or night or flat against the wall. Knees bent to 90 degrees. And keep engaging your leg muscles. You know, they're probably getting tired by now, but you're doing great. Keep up the good work. The more you put in, the more you'll get out of it. So don't quit now. And rest. Next up, last of our toe taps. This is our last set. And exercise. So left foot toe taps coming at 10 o'clock. I like to do fast toe taps. Heel stays on the ground, toe goes up and down. Very minimally. It's not a huge movement here. Good job. And rest. Get ready for those ski jumps. Last set of ski jumps so you can do it. And exercise, knees bent, feet jumping together, left to right, right to left, hands go forward, her arms go swing forward when you jump, swing backward when you land. Feel free to jump at whatever pace works best for you. And rest. Next up, our last wall sit. You can do it. All right. And exercise. Back fly against the wall. Chest forward. Knees bent at a 90 degree angle. If you can, if you need to lessen the degree, that's fine. So last one. Don't give up now. You get out what you put in. 
do it. You can do it. Three seconds. And good. Rest. Awesome. So now we're going to sit a sip of water and we will do our core exercises on the ground. Okay, some water here. So meet me on the ground here. We're actually going to start in plank position, so on our bellies. So what you're going to do, if you want like a yoga mat or something, a cushion under you, feel free to get one. Um, so forearm plank. So what you're going to do is you're going to start on your belly. So if you're laying on your belly, I'm going to put my forearms down so that my chest is not on the ground. So my elbows and my forearms are holding me up right now. My chest, up at least. What you're going to do is tuck your toes under. So my toes are pointed towards the ground and my heels are now pointed up towards the ceiling. And what you're going to do is you're going to use those core muscles and you're going to lift your legs and your torso off the ground. So the only thing on the ground will be your toes and your forearms. And you should have a flat back. So you should be able to rest a dinner plate on it and not have it spilled off. So this is our forearm plank. So this is a version of a high plank. Um, high plank is when you extend your arms full, the full way, but a um, forearm plank has less impact on your wrist. So if you want to do a high plank um, with your arms fully extended, so just your hands and your feet are on the ground, you're more than welcome. But that is our forearm plank. So keeping that back straight, you don't want your um, bottom to be up in the air too high. You don't want your hips to sink low. You want to be as stiff as a board. So that is our forearm plank. Next up is our bird dog. So I'm going to get on my hands and knees here. So I'm on all fours. So I am in tabletop position. So that means that my back is flat here as well. I can rest the dinner plate on it and it will not fall off. And what I'm going to do here with bird dog is I'm going to extend my right arm out forward in front of me and extend my left leg out behind me. So I'm balancing on my left hand and my right knee. And when I'm doing this, I'm as stiff as a board. I'm making myself as flat as possible. And then I'm bringing both my arm and my hand or my hand and my leg back down to tabletop position. And I'm going to repeat on the other side. Left arm forward, right leg back. Balance there and then bring it back to tabletop position. One alternative of this is instead of doing an arm and a leg at the same time, just do one limb at a time. One arm, switch to the other arm, switch to one leg, switch to another leg. So you're still engaging your core in that way, um, but the balance isn't as, um, doesn't take as much of a toll on the balance, your equilibrium. It equilibrium. So that is bird dog. And then we will switch between um, our opposite arm and opposite leg. And then next up is our boat to low boat. So next position, sit on your bottom. And what you're going to do is my feet are flat on the floor. My knees are pointed towards the ceiling. My bottom is on the ground. So I'm going to take my arms and I'm going to extend them out in front of me like Frankenstein. And then I'm going to drop them down low. So now they're extended out in front of me, but now they're on each the outside of my knees. So in my, you can have your hands facing whatever direction you want. My palms are faced towards each other, but they can be down. Um, so what you're going to do here is boat pose is this pose exactly, but you lift your feet off the ground. So now you're bouncing on your bottom. Then a low boat pose is you're going to extend your feet out straight and then lean your body, your torso backwards. And then you're going to come back into that boat pose. So low boat, sending your legs out, leaning back, and then coming back into your boat pose. So that is boat to low boat, and that's a constant movement of boat, low boat, boat, low boat. 
Um, so you're constantly bouncing and your core is definitely engaged. Do not forget to breathe during these core exercises. So important, do not forget to breathe. So uh, with that being said, uh, we are going to go into our core circuit. So starting with forearm plank, and again, we're doing each of these for 30 seconds, so we're going through it four times. All right, I'm on my belly now, getting ready, and I'm going to hit play, starting with forearm plank. So, ready in three, two, one, eight. So curl your toes under, toes to the ground, heels to the sky. You're on your forearms and your elbows. Your belly and legs are not on the ground. You're making yourself flat, so your uh, bottom isn't totally up to, up in the air. Your hips are not sinking, sinking down low. You're engaging your core to do this, so that means you're pulling your belly button in. Really, really um, engaging. Don't forget to breathe and rest. Nice job. Get ready for bird dog. So get into that tabletop position. Hands and knees flat back. And bird dog. Extend out your right hand and left leg. Bring them back to starting position. Extend your left hand out in front of you, right leg behind you. Bring you back to starting position. So remember, you can do one limb at a time if you need. Or continue to go for it. Job. Best. Next up is our boat to lobo. So get on your bottom feet, our knees pointing towards the ceiling, and start. So my arms are on the outside of my knees. I'm lifting my feet off the ground in boat pose, extending my legs out straight, leaning back to lobo, and then coming back to my boat pose. So continuing this motion, really engaging your core muscles here. They're doing all the work. Don't forget to breathe. These exercises will get easier as you do them more. And rest. All right, get back on your bellies. Get set up for forearm plank. Exercise, tuck those toes under, forearms on the ground, and lift that body up. You don't want your bum too high or too low. Keep a Stiff, stiff position here. Don't forget to breathe. In through your nose, out through your mouth. And rest. Get ready for a bird dog. Get into that plank bot, um, tabletop position. Hands in, on your hands and knees. And exercise. Right arm out, left leg back, and continue. Keeping that balance, moving slowly here is key. Keep all those muscles engaged. Moving slowly also helps your body transition that balance when it needs to. If you move really quickly, it's harder to balance. And rest. Get ready for our boat to little boat. And exercise. Boat to low boat. Knees pointing towards the ceiling. Feet are hovering. Arms are straight out in front of me to the sides of each of my knees. The outside. Straightening my leg. Moving my torso backward. And then bringing them back into my starting boat pose. Job and rest. Get ready to do that forearm plank again. On the belly and exercise. Curl those toes under and on your forearms. Your core is doing a lot of this work for you here. Keep your back flat. Halfway through. Keep 
breathing and rest. Third dog pose on tabletop position, hands and knees. Get ready here, flat back and exercise. Keep it up. Nice job. We're almost through. Almost there. Um, and then 
sometimes your my knee is into my chest and my leg is bent my ankles kind of free so i'm just going to roll my ankle a little bit in both directions Wonderful. All right, straighten that leg out. Hug your left knee into your chest. Do some ankle rotations here as well. We're going to move into our lying twist. So, what you're going to do. Put your arms out in a T-shape on the ground where you're laying. You're going to bring both knees or bring, bend both your knees so your legs come off the ground and your knees are bent at 90 degree angles. Toes are pointed towards the ceiling. Shins are parallel with the ceiling. And let your knees gently fall to your right side. You can feel your left shoulder peel off the ground a little bit here, and that's okay. Charge your back. Great. And bring your knees back to center. And let them fall to your left this time. You don't knock anything over in the process like I almost just did. <laughs> you feel, since your knees are to your left, if you feel your right shoulder peel off the ground a little bit, that is okay. Nice relaxation. When you're ready, you can sit up and extend your legs out straight and attempt to touch your toes, seated or fold. I am not being successful in touching my toes, so I am being successful in touching my shins, though. So wherever you can reach is great. As long as you're feeling that stretch in the backs of your legs. or you can stand, whatever you prefer. I'm going to put my right hand out as if I'm going to shake somebody's hand. And then I'm going to move it so my right fingertips are pointing to the wall to my left. So now my arms cross my body. I take my left hand, put it in between my right shoulder and my right elbow to help hug my right arm closer to my body, get more of a stretch there in my shoulder. Wonderful. All right. Now we are going to extend our left arm out in front of us. And like we are shaking somebody's hand with our left hand, you're going to take your left fingertips, point them to the wall to your right. Take your right hand, put it in between your, el your left elbow and your left shoulder and hug that arm closer to you. We will now move into butterfly pose. So I'm sitting cross-legged, so this transition is a little bit easier for me. Um, so I am going to take the bottoms of my feet and put them together in front of me so that my knees bend and fall out to my sides. So bottoms of my feet together, lean forward for more of a stretch, um, and bring your feet closer to your body for more of a stretch, for less of a stretch, feet further away, knees pointed more upwards. Feeling. 
and we can end in child's pose. So if you know child's pose, hop into it. If not, join me in tabletop position on your hands and knees, flat back. Then turn your knees to point slightly outwards, and that'll bring your feet together. Slowly bring your bottom back into your feet. Stretch and extend your arms forward. To slide them forward. As you slide them forward, you'll find that your head or your forehead comes to the ground. That's perfect. That's supposed to happen. And just relax here for a moment. And that is the end of our full body circuit. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you enjoyed yourself.